Well, hey, everybody. Uh, welcome to the uh, Attorney General's office. My name is Keith Ellison. I'm the Attorney General. And um, it's my job to help Minnesotans afford their lives. And sometimes that means bringing lawsuits against those who would violate their rights. Uh, today, uh, we're here to announce a settlement with CenturyLink. CenturyLink uh, is a company uh, operating nationally uh, who we allege violated several consumer statutes. Uh, we had a number of uh, citizens call and complain, nearly 5,000, and we have three of them here today. And we pulled those complaints together into a complaint which we filed, and we were ready to go to trial in March. I mean, the trial clock was ticking. And yet, uh, a few weeks before that trial date, we were able to come together and get into an agreement with CenturyLink that would involve them doing two things, paying money back to the people that they took it from and changing their business practices. Uh, this is very important, and it is heart about, at the very heart of why I wanted to be the Attorney General. And uh, I'm very, very proud of our team. We have an amazing team fighting for consumers every single day. Uh, I want you to meet some of them. Uh, let me first of all introduce the leader of that team, and that's uh, James Kennedy, who's right there. Can at least we give a little clap to James Kennedy? There you go. And Jason Plague and Kugel, who's right there. Yep. <laughs> And, uh, and, and, and um, Marie uh, Cicilline, Saikana, yep. Yeah. And uh, also, I want to introduce to you right now a young man by the name of Alex Baldwin, who was the lead lawyer on the file. file. And you should know that he got this case on his very first day at the office. This is he. And I said, when did you first start this case, Alex? He said, August 31st, 2015. I said, don't you know the exact time? Anyway, Alex is an eager, aggressive litigator. He fought this case tooth and nail. When he demanded information as he was entitled to receive on behalf of consumers, and he didn't get it, he filed motions to compel. He was relentless on behalf of the people of this state. And Alex, I'd like you to come up and tell folks a little bit about the features of the settlement. Marie, come on up here, Brian. Let the people see you. Alex Baldwin, everybody. Thank you. So the first component of our settlement that I'm going to discuss is the monetary payment. CenturyLink is going to pay a total of over $844,000 to more than 12,000 Minnesota consumers. Each of these consumers were told that they were going to get a specific discount, but that was a lie. They never received it. If you are a current CenturyLink customer and you are one of these 12,000 people, you will be getting a bill credit. And if you are a former CenturyLink customer and you are one of these 12,000, you will be receiving a check. So this was one very discreet, specific part of the settlement and we got full refunds for this issue. The second part of the monetary payment is CenturyLink will be making more than $8 million payment directly to the Attorney General's office. And we're going to use that to distribute to consumers who were harmed in other ways, who were not on this list of the 12,000 people. And I'm gonna re recap at the end here, but we want you to contact us if you believe in any way that you were overcharged or overbilled, if you didn't receive anything of value from CenturyLink, we want you to contact us because we wanna get you the refunds. After the monetary payment, oh. CenturyLink has agreed to make fundamental reforms to the way that they do business in Minnesota. And this is something we're really proud of and really is tailored to all of the information we learned at in litigation. So first, CenturyLink has to disclose its true prices. So if they charge one price and add some fees on top of that, they have to tell you about all of those fees. So they have to do that at the time of sale, when you're talking to somebody on the phone, if you're ordering service online. And then they also have to do that in their advertisements. So before where they tried to omit information entirely or bury it in fine print, it's gotta be prominent and disclosed so you can, can figure out what you're really gonna pay. The second part of this fundamental business reform is that CenturyLink has to provide consumers with an order confirmation 
after the time of sale. So it's got the complete summary of your services, your prices, if there's any rules or eligibility requirements that you have to maintain, and they have to put this in writing. So make sure when you get that, you wanna review it and make sure it matches the information you were told at the time of sale. The third fundamental reform that CenturyLink has to make is they have to actually honor those prices and discounts. So this is a really uh, kind of a 180 from the way they did business before. If you call in and say, I was told it was $40 and my bill is 80, CenturyLink has to honor that unless they can find unambiguous information to dispute that. So for example, they have to retain call recordings and written documents. So it's on them to prove you wrong if you think that they're charging you more. And finally, and this one is, is maybe the biggest in terms of dollar amounts, CenturyLink has to stop charging sham internet fees going forward. CenturyLink created a, a sham fee that provided consumers nothing of value. They called it the internet cost recovery fee. Tried to make it sound like a tax or some other kind of government fee. It wasn't. It was completely made up. And they started charging all internet customers for this fee. And they raised that from 99 cents to $1.99 to $3.99 over the course of several years. And they imposed this increase even on people who were on fixed price contracts. So going forward, within 90 days, they can no longer charge this fee on new orders. And based on the information that we discovered during litigation, this, we know this will save millions or tens of millions of dollars going forward. The CenturyLink settlement will be enforced. CenturyLink has to submit audits to the Attorney General's office over the next three years to show how they are complying with the settlement in Minnesota law. They have to preserve certain documents, make information available to us, and we will definitely be closely monitoring this company to make sure that they're complying with the law. And if they're not, we can file a motion in court to seek to hold CenturyLink as a whole in contempt or to seek civil penalties if they violate any provisions. So if any consumer going forward thinks that they were wronged in any way, charged more than they were told, didn't get something that they were promised, we want you to contact us because we need to know this because going forward, CenturyLink's got to abide by these rules and these reforms. And as I mentioned earlier, we want to distribute that more than $8 million to as many consumers as possible. The cutoff, it goes back quite a ways. If you've had service with CenturyLink, internet or, or uh, television service at any time since July 12, 2011, and believe that you were charged more, you were overbilled, you didn't get a discount, you didn't get something they promised, we want to get that money back to you. And so if you, the, the website is there where consumers can put in their information. This is just the first step. All you're doing is you know, giving us your contact information so we can contact you at a later date. And you can also call the office as well. And we want to hear from people, anyone who was wronged in any way in the last uh, nine years, basically. Thank you, Alex. Good job. And let me just also tell you, you know, it was, it was a tough road for Alex. He's a humble man, but he had to fight every step of the way. And because he was dogged in his pursuit of the information that he deserved uh, and on behalf of all of us, uh, he was able to show that CenturyLink ultimately produced information that showed that they potentially overbilled more than 300,000 Minnesotans. But he wouldn't, they didn't just give it to him on the front end. He had to fight for it. Let me also note that this case uh, does have implications for other people around the country. As Minnesotans, we tend to be concerned about the whole country. And um, as a result of our cooperation, and uh, we know that the folks in Colorado, Oregon, and Washington have also settled with CenturyLink, and their settlements and ours together are about $27 million, putting uh, that money back into the pockets of consumers. And so we're continuing to work and to make sure that 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 uh, people get what they deserve. Again, I already thanked uh, James Kennedy, Jason Plagenkugel, Alex, uh, and Marie uh, Silicano. But I also want to thank Lori Swanson. I was on the phone with her today, letting her know that this case was resolving, and she was excited to hear about it, showing that um, if you look up on that wall and see all those attorneys general, that we're all trying to bring justice forward for Minnesotans. And she did her part. I'm doing mine. And I thank them for it. And also, I will say this, even though CenturyLink put, put us through a lot of changes, they did cooperate to this settlement agreement. So that's good. And so I'll thank uh, Jerry Blackwell for that. 
Um, let me uh, wrap up by saying this. We have three folks here who I want you to meet. They're brave Minnesotans, courageous people who saw a problem, saw something that wasn't right with their bill and stepped up and said, hey, you know, I don't, I don't think this is the right thing. One of them actually got information about filing a consumer complaint at the Minnesota State Fair, which is great. And so I want to introduce to you Suzanne Holt of Minneapolis, Brandon Trampe of Columbia Heights, and Kent Zola of South St. Paul. Uh, we can play your tape, but I also want to invite you to make any comment you would care to at this time. Would you like to just say anything about what you went through? Well, I would sure. say that I talked to a young man on the phone, and he wasn't nice to me. And he couldn't do what they had told me they could do prior to that. And it didn't seem right. And I had been to the Minnesota State Fair. And I had been to the Attorney General's booth and picked up information. So I had the complaint form. And I filled it out. And Alex Baldwin called me. And then here we are. It's amazing, and it wasn't one voice, but I thought I was. You know, you don't know you're not out there alone. Did you so, tell me that you felt like maybe you were alone? You didn't I know. did, I did. And as we get older, we feel like, oh, I must have misunderstood or, you know, did, or it wasn't right. But it just didn't seem right, so I thought I'm going to complain. It didn't seem right, and it wasn't right. It wasn't, wasn't right. <laughs> Suzanne, S-U-Z-A-N-N-E, Holt, H-O-L-T. How much time would you say you spent on the phone with them trying to figure out your bill? Oh, I don't even know. You know, it was so long ago. Too, too much. Waiting. And the most of the time was spent waiting. Talk to someone and they would say, well, just a minute, I'll get you my escalation supervisor. I'm like, what is that? <laughs> So, pardon? What wasn't right about it? The, they told me they would charge me one amount, and then they charged me a larger amount. And then they told me, oh, they were undergoing a change in their system of billing, so I would have to wait a month or two to see how that went. So. Where you live is CenturyLink the only option? No, it wasn't. So I'm, I'm no longer a customer, and I probably will never be. And television. and television. Right. Keith, I have a question just real quick. Uh, you mentioned a big number of potentially people could be I the century. So without really ever looking carefully at my question, how do you even know if you were? And well, first thing, we want to urge people to look at their bills. Because well, we... Well, yeah. And if you look at you, Beryl, you probably won't understand it. <laughs> you, thank you for that. Uh, and, but, look, but definitely look at it. Try to understand it. If you don't get it, call Alex Baldwin. <laughs> but, but call us. That's why we put the information up there. You know, part of the way we're going to make sure that this settlement is uh, discharged properly is uh, consumers calling us. So we really want to urge people to get in touch with us, to give us a call. We know, look, a lot of Minnesotans, you know, don't want to complain. You know, we kind of suck it up and deal. But this is not the right thing to do in this situation. You know, you, you, you should call. Uh, you should uh, clarify. Uh, you should make sure that uh, you're being treated properly and fairly. Um, and so for uh, our other gentlemen who are here today, can we play some of the tape? Go for it. <clears throat> well, that would bring your internet to 1495 for the 12 months, and then it would go to the 2495. If you'll do it for 1495, and I say yes, then I guess I don't know. That was a misquote, because they can't give it to you 1495 at all. Okay, I'm gonna let you know you can't get to 1495. You know, so then, you know, they said, okay, just you know, 1495 a month. So that's, you know, what I think I'm 
tank, but that's what I agreed to, you know, it's a legal contract. Uh, so how do I, how do I get that price? You can't get the price. Okay, so who do I talk to to get that price? Do I have to file a lawsuit or who do I have to, you know, who do I have to talk to? You cannot get that price. No one in Central can give you that price. Okay. okay. Well, they, they did. I sound like a run around. You want to say anything about that, Brandon? Or? I can or I can wait. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, so my name is Brandon. I guess as you uh, heard on the call, right, so I was promised one price, and I think like a lot of other people were, uh, ended up I ended up being charged another price, which was obviously frustrating to me. And even after calling in, as you heard on the second call, I you know, was told that I couldn't get that price, even though, right, as we heard on the recording, they apparently had a recording that, hey, that's what they agreed to. So it's very frustrating to me. Uh, I guess I'll also note that after that, and after uh, filing a complaint with the Attorney General's office, uh, even after getting the Attorney General involved, I continued to have significant problems with CenturyLink where they would say, hey, we we're giving you this bill credit or we're, uh, we're, we're changing your bill, we're changing your price. And even after having some of those things uh, told to me with the Attorney General's intervention, I had to continue on a number of occasions to get, uh, get assistance just to have those changes made to my bill. So I uh, really appreciate the effort of the Attorney General's office and helping me out with that and helping uh, you know, all Minnesotans get this taken care of. I uh, really appreciate working with Alex. Uh, tremendous effort to help me out. And yeah, just want to thank the Attorney General's office for, for their work on this. And what's your last name? Uh, Trampy, T R A M P E. First name? Brandon, B R A N D O N. And where are, you, where are you in St. Paul? Or where are you Columbia Heights. Columbia Heights. And how do you feel with this announcement? Happy. I mean, been, it's been a been a long road, I know, for a lot of people involved, but happy to see it finally come to a conclusion here. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Brandon. And uh, let's play Kent's tape. Okay, I got the internet down to 99.5 a month for 12 months. I understand you're calling about the price of your internet. Well, yeah, this is. Uh, my third call today, even with that, the bill is still not correct because you said it should be 1995, and it was not 1995, it was 37. Months. No, because it has not been added. They did not add anything. So where does the 1995 come in then? I will tell you that the only thing we can do is give you what is available on your account. I understand that you were misquoted, that they were going to try and give you the 50% off, but it's not available. Now, these phone calls that we have, are these legal contracts? I mean, if I say that I'm going to sign up for a commitment, I'm assuming that you can then charge me if I break that commitment, correct? They are not, no, they are not binding commitments unless you sign, an, unless you have a contract, and loyalties are not contracts. They're a gift from us to you. You see what's going on here. You're saying that I, you can require me to commit to something, but you don't have to honor your commitment. That you can tell me anything you want over the phone, and there's no no uh, follow through on that. There's no commitment on that. Well, if there is something there that's not available, I can't give it to you. No one can. Um, well, I know that these phone calls are recorded. Can you bring up that phone call, please? No, I this cannot. Is what I was told. Okay, so who do I talk to? You? And I, I can leave it for a manager. They're all in a meeting this week. I can't give any credit or anything. <laughs> this week. <laughs> so what you just, you want to say anything, uh, Kit? So many pleasant memories. <laughs> <laughs> that was the third call that day, I think I said. Yeah. And probably the third call that year, third day that year, and the third, it just went on and on and on. It was never ending with, with CenturyLink. Yeah. So happy to see yourself. I am, finally. It took a long time. Would you say and spell your first name? Kent, K-E-N-T, Zoya, Z, like zebra, O-Y-A. I'm from South St. Paul. Yeah. I'm just curious. Yeah. When you made a phone call, You know, I don't remember them being especially long. I just remember there being a lot of them because you could never get resolution. 
so you'd have to try and try and try and then eventually contact the state and say can you help me out here I'm not getting anywhere maybe it didn't work but maybe and Keith this started with Lori right I think yeah. it was at this press conference sure did. her office 2015 2015 yeah yeah she announced that yeah yep and uh you know I, I was on the phone with her just a few minutes ago and she was really excited that we had brought this matter to a conclusion no look the trial date was in March we were ready to go Alex was ready to go but um and we believe in trying these cases because if you don't if you know if you're not a credible trial threat they won't give you the deal that you should get. So we're, we stand at the ready to advocate for consumers. Uh, I will say this too, and I think this is very, very important. Look, we have a group uh, in, our, in our call group. These are folks uh, who are in specialists uh, in consumer investigation, uh, and they work really, really hard. Last year, they took about 75,000 calls. 75,000 calls, uh, and they returned about $4 million back to people. These folks sit in cubicles, and uh, they, they just handle and deal every single day. And we're so proud of them. They rarely get that much attention. They rarely get celebrated that much. But for the folks in that call room on our consumer team, uh, hats off, because it was their uh, collection of the complaints uh, that was allowed us to be able to file the suit. But before that ever happened, we needed courageous people uh, like uh, Kent, like Brandon, uh, and um, I'm sorry, Suzanne. and Suzanne, who stepped up, stayed on the phone, wouldn't take nonsense for an answer, uh, which has resulted uh, in uh, where we are today. And so I just want to let everybody know uh, what the settlement uh, uh, terms were. We will be pursuing. We can go back if they if they go back on their word, and we will. Uh, so that's it. Well, all the above plus the audits that they have to do. Uh, but one of the reasons we wanted to announce this settlement publicly is because we want people to call and let us know if things aren't going right. Uh, and we believe that uh, they will, which is why we entered into the settlement. But there's always this significant chance that they won't. So we want people to give us a call. Alex, you want to add anything on here about enforcement? I think you covered it. Okay, good. Yeah, any, any, you want to say anything about that? Sure. So the, the 12,000 people who are getting their refunds, that's about $75 a person because that's what the record showed. For the $8 million that we're seeking to distribute to consumers, uh, the process is not final, but our intent is the full amount that people were overcharged we want to get back in their pockets. And that will vary um, from person to person. So unless there's anything else, we want to thank uh, members of the press for coming in, and we'll be in touch.